What's up? We're live from McCoy Stadium. This is the Lost Sox Report. It's been a very long time, Evan, since we've been talking here. Yes, it has been. It's been a very busy couple of weeks. Uh, well, not really. It was a vacation for me, so I'm not busy Pretty much. whatsoever. Evan might have been busy, but I was relaxing on the beach and drinking. So, uh, yeah, so we're live in McCoy. Uh, Alexander Bogart just hit a walk-off home run to deep center field. Walk-off grand slam. Grand slam. Wow. This is the beauty of a live broadcast uh, where anything can happen. As you can see behind us, there's Paw Sox players and Syracuse Chiefs players warming up for tonight's game. But let's face it, it's a triple-A baseball game. Not too much going on, but what is going on? is the roster moves. Evan, give us a rundown of what has occurred. Well, the big move today was the Red Sox have, uh, uh, the Paw Sox have officially added Brandon Phillips to their uh, roster. So now your three four hitters are going to be Brandon Phillips and Adam Lynn. The 2010 uh, NL All-Star team would be very proud right now. Um, we also uh, have had, uh, they also, uh, the Pulse also will be called Trevor Kelly from AA Port, uh, Portland, Providence, Rhode Island native, so it's going to be pretty nice for him to be proud to see him back here. Um, we also had Bobby Boyne get pulled back up to Boston. Uh, Bobby Scott was sent back down after he threw two innings last night, 37 pitches. Considering the Red Sox bullpen was completed in this game, just ended in the 10th inning. They, they needed, needed the help. They needed the help. Um, Scott's still on the cloud coming back down, so he's not the added back. Um, and also, Andre Jesus has uh, been reactivated. He was on the break. Right. Um, so yeah, he's back. It's been an interesting couple days. So we got Williams Quaver tonight on the mound, coming back down. It's his first start after his major league call up of 90 to 95 pitches. Um, it's tonight, the uh, Karen Bull said he's going to be between 90 and 100 pitches. Um, considering that he hasn't made his heart since June 27th, and while he was in Boston, he went through two innings um, in Washington. So he hasn't pitched a lot lately, but we'll say he's going to be at about 900 pitches tonight. So. Yeah, we'll see him. And um, there's a couple other things. Uh, Ty Butchery, since Ryan Brazier is up in Boston, he's actually done an excellent job for the Boston Red Sox. Brazier has. He had a pretty good outing last night. Yeah, two um, innings, gave him some length. Especially after Brazier's look good in Boston. Uh, the, what the second longest return for Tommy John in baseball or something like that? Five years to get back to the major leagues after in 2013 he pitched for the Angels. This is an incredible story in Ryan Brazier, and it's excellent to see him back. But that opens an opportunity here in Kentucky. If Brazier was the closer, so now you're gonna have a guy like Ty Butchery who's gonna get that opportunity to become the closer here in AAA. He has that live fastball. High 90s can hit 100 if he wants to. Um, the issue with Buttry earlier on in the season was his mix. He was relying too heavily on that fastball. Um, the last couple of weeks, he's sort of seen that mix start to kind of work his way in. With the coaching staff kind of saying, hey, don't rely much on that fastball. Um, so that's the, that's the trap here with him, though, because when you start to mix in pitches, if your fastball is working, you're worried about their bats being something that Bulls talked about last night about Butcher was, yeah, the, the mix is getting there, but you don't want to see it fall to the trap with that fastball either. Reinforce the mix. Um, so Butcher is going to keep getting the shot. And for Boston, he's on the 40-man roster, so you could see him with the Boston Red Sox at some point this season. Oh, you absolutely could, and I think by September, you will definitely see him up in Boston. Like you said, he's got that power arm, he can uh, they're using him as a closer down here. They see him as a late game uh, guy that has laying potential. Considering he has a uh, sub two ER yeah, this season for the Paw Sox, it'd be kind of stupid not to uh, give him a shot up in Boston, especially since they struggled with the bullpen this year. Like even Joe Kelly since June first, he's a 9 6 ERA. Well, he's supposed like, to be your seventh inning guy. Other guys like Matt Barnes, yeah. remember you guys didn't really have too much faith in him? You didn't correct him a lot of times, you're kind of like, you know? Heart attack closer. Yeah. So th they could use like guys like Ryan Brazier have stepped up. Is there going to be longevity there? I don't know. Uh, but yeah, Butchery's I mean, on the forty man and uh, William Suarez as well. Yeah, Another I mean guy. the only thing that scares me about Brazier is even though yes he has pitched very well for the Paw Sox so far this season, uh, the, Red, the Red Sox since he got called out last weekend. Um, one thing I've noticed is in each game he's play, uh, pitched in, he's given up a long fly ball to the forty track in right field. He certainly has, but uh, he's kept it in the ballpark. He has, certainly but, important. He has, but 
Yankee Stadium, Minute Maid Park. Well, in 98 mile an hour fastball, you get away with that if you leave it up in the zone here in Pawtucket. In, in Boston, in the major leagues, if you leave that fastball up, you're going to get drilled. And that's something that he's going to have to learn. Because, yes, he's an older player. He, he's a grizzled veteran, you want to say. But in terms of major league experience, what is it, seven outings? 2013 and that's it. Yeah. So he hasn't really faced that kind of talent and it's going to be up to that coaching staff in Boston and whether or not he's open to kind of learning how to pitch at the major level. Because yeah, he had success with the Angels. Having success now, to lead that fastball up, that's going to get you in trouble. Pitches you get away with here and then the minor leagues and then maybe in Japan, you can't get away with in Boston. Um, so yeah, that's probably going to end up coming back to hurt him if he doesn't figure that out a little bit. But that's one thing that they've been doing a very good job here in Pawtucket this season, is making these pitchers ready for the majors. Who cares about the performance here, right? Right. They boasted about Ty Butcher last night. In Boston, he's on their radar. At this point, it doesn't matter about what he does here. It's just getting him ready for the major leagues. And that's something Alex Cora said after Jalen Beeks made his major league debut. We don't care about your results in Pawtucket. We care about you mixing in your pitches so you're ready for the majors. Um, and that's something, it's a way different mentality this year than last year throughout the entire organization. Oh, no, especially it has, it has, it absolutely has to be, uh, it's all thanks to Alex for it. Like, you can see it in the clubhouse. Pitches. You can hear it in the players' voices, the way they're talking. Yeah, considering they're now 67 and 30. When you're winning, when it's you're, very easy to when you're, when you're doing that well, yes, it makes it a lot easier. Um, so it's certainly interesting. Uh, in terms of other guys who could come up, Chandler Shepard is a starter who could potentially come up that you haven't seen yet. Obviously, William Quavis is a guy who could be called up at some point, Justin Haley. Um, but if you look at the AAA roster, it's filled with guys. not prospects for the most part, but just major league depth. It really is, uh, especially like we said earlier, Adam Lane, Brandon Phillips. Phillips is a guy you probably look in the bullpen. You got Boston. a guy, uh, Fernando Rodriguez. Fernando Rodriguez, that's another one, not that one. He had, what, um, 72 outings with the Houston Astros and they lost like 100 games or whatever. A couple years back, he was going for like, he was almost at the appearance record or something like that. Yeah, hey. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah it, 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 you look at the entire roster, it is all major league depth. No, it re- I mean, it really is. Like, if you look at like top prospects that you have done uh, yeah, yeah, right now. Yeah, he's another guy. Just, he is another guy. Um, nobody pops off the page. You're right. Um, but like when it comes to like prospects that you really haven't seen yet, the next two that you probably see up there is like you said, uh, Ty Butchery and I would have to say Chandler Shepard. Yeah, potentially. Uh, I would say Perez is an option because he's on the 40 man. Yeah, yeah sure. It's correct. So those are the three pitchers. Um, in terms of positional, there isn't right. There, there isn't a guy you haven't seen at some point in the major leagues, really. Right. The one. I mean, the one guy that you probably or should Vega, be up there. But he's like. 21-year-old kid out of college draft last month is already in Pawtucket. I mean, you gotta give the uh, get, uh, get, uh, get the kid credit. So far this season, he pitched well. Uh, pitched well. He's uh, hit well. In, uh, 326, 43 at bat, 16 I mean, games. I mean, it's not much, but good defensively. They said. He's shown uh, he's done well. He plays well up the middle. Um, gets the the ball sack side much first, needed for de- uh, much needed depth. Yeah. Um, Kevin Wolf said uh, before the game that. Before yesterday, when they called him up, they were really, really thin, uh, especially in the infield. Um, so they called him up to give him that extra, uh, much needed depth. Now that De Jesus is back from the grieve uh, list, it does make things a little bit easier. But he is also here. Uh, I, yeah, I the kid just came out of college. So here's my thing with Ortega. He's already up at AAA. But Congrats, man. Bowles yesterday said that Ortega is depth for them. Right. This is a 20 year old kid that was just drafted. I'm not too keen on him being deaf. Uh, I would like him to be getting at best. Right. There, there is in the timeline today. We don't know I mean, yet. I mean, chances are he will not be up here long. Um, it's probably more just getting like a cup of coffee because after all, it is just. Oh, no, certainly is. They especially since, that. especially since they were really under the 25 man uh, roster yesterday. Now they're so, at it. And now they're uh, now they're at it, so it does give them a little bit extra room to be able to uh, play. Yeah. Um, so we're starting to see a four take. I want him to get at bats. So I don't really. Want him to be deaf. But probably just that, that. it could be a couple of days. Um, I was actually shocked when he put that back down. Is it Portland, maybe not Lowell, maybe he wanted to put in Portland? I don't know. Um, I, I Michael Chavis is another guy we didn't mention yet, but like potentially could be coming up the road here in the pocket soon. Uh, hopefully, that'd be good for us. Yeah, I mean, maybe 
kid's got quick hands, he's... Uh, granted, he missed half a season by that, but... It's stuff that you see him for a second later on in the season. I think he's going to fuck it just to see what he does. Yeah. I, I think he's seen enough out of Michael Chavis and Forlis. Where now you get him some at bats, get him his feet underneath, you want his feet underneath, and you say, alright, you're going to the top. You know, at this point, he's such a top prospect. Maybe try to build something back up in terms of trade value. Um, I don't know if he's really going to be a Boston guy at any point. Uh, especially at third base, I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah. Offensively, he was. I mean, Devers has gotten a lot better, but Chavis is like. He's missed half a season. And he was really bad defensively. So it's actually, you know, that, first that, that will be an issue. That is an issue. The kid's great at that. Yeah, at some play point. Play. Dude, we're talking about major league depth down here. At some point, you have to start cutting some of that major depth. You guys aren't going to use, guaranteed. Um, every team does this every year. If there's guys you know you're not going to call up, Adam Lynn maybe, um, you move on for them. Call somebody up from the lower and try to get them that bad higher level. And try to develop prospects. And this is an organization that doesn't have its own prospects. Just sort of a lot of the prospects that they do have are down in Greenville. But Greenville you have to sort of push so the organization along. So something, uh, so a lot of guys you probably end up seeing is you'd see the guys from AA go up to AAA and the guys from AA go up. Right. So at that point, so at some point here, you so, need to see this happen. Right, and right now there's really not a ton. Ortega's the first guy that we've really seen that's like a, a good prospect that's come up real quick, but he's not even going to be here for a while. I mean, even if he even helped the prospect, he's played, like you said, what, 16 games? Yeah. Oh, well, prospect, but not. I, I think at some point you're going to have to see that push. It happens with every team every year. There's guys they know they're not going to call up. Adam Lynn probably didn't call up at some point. Brandon Phillips feels like now they're rushing to the system. I was confused yesterday why Phillips wasn't called up before Ortega. That kind of made no sense to me. Why they made that move. Maybe it wasn't right, maybe it was something like that. Maybe Phillips couldn't play yesterday in terms of availability. They needed a fielder potentially, but Ortega didn't play. So. But I do wonder, at one point, are they going to, as an organization, say, we don't need all the depth. We're going to cut the guys, we're going to bring the guys up so we can start to push this development here. Get these guys up from Greenville, put them in the mold, yeah, move, or put them in Portland and move that up. Um, so at some point they have to make that decision. Because there's a lot of nice guys in this roster, but a lot of them you know aren't going to be in Boston. So you got to make some tough decisions, but that's baseball, that's the business of baseball. You have to develop players, because in an organization that's that prospect, let's see if somebody surprises them, right? Let's see if someone does a Travis shot. Kind of pops out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, that's probably what you're gonna. That's what you're gonna need. I mean, down here, there's a guy in this lineup that I see that could possibly be there. Where's like a steal, but you know what he is. You know, you know what he is. I mean, he definitely deserves a shot in the major leagues, but because of the tax, uh, um, tax and, and he's on the DL right now. Uh, but uh, talking to the Bulls yesterday, he just can't run. He can hit. He took BP yesterday. He's, he's kind of jogging around a little bit. Grow corn a little. He can't run, and that's kind of been the thing. Some things can't do other things. Um, so it sounded like it was kind of like in flux in terms of how long he's going to be out. Yeah, there's no one that pops off the page. Um, yeah, there's some pitchers, some relievers. Like Fernando Rodriguez, potentially. Like, he missed a lot of time. Yeah, that'd be like the only guy that he can't mention. He feels good. Uh, I mean, he's a guy who has a good amount of major experience. Um, they like him. You know, they brought him over after the Cubs released him last year, and he was injured to start of the year, and injured last year, so they told him to go home, and they kept they weren't going to release him. So they brought him back in. Yeah, I mean, well, this, this year... a guy that they knew, like, and they liked him when he signed with the Cubs last year, apparently, like, the Red Sox were not. Yeah, I mean, this year, the, uh, Rodriguez did play in one game here at the beginning of the season, when it was, like, maybe it was, like, 75. Yeah, it was a like, ham- hamstring issue, though. Which, I can honestly, I can would have to pretty much anybody because it was so cold, but yeah, so after that, yeah, he was on the DL for like that's not That's months. another guy that can eat some innings in Boston if they need the potential. But, uh, it's an interesting team. I just wonder when they're going to start pushing guys out and pushing guys out. Because at some point, you have to do that, you know? You, know? you don't need to have a ton of major league depth here at this point in the season unless you know you're going to use guys. And there's some guys here you know you're not going to use. Yeah, I mean, the fact that they kept him alive, uh, that Adam Lee didn't knock out of his contract tells you that there's a chance that he thinks that he's going to get called up. Call up. I think Brandon Phillips is almost a lock right now. Yeah, I think Pedroia might be done. Okay, Pedroia, yeah, Pedroia's done here. Yeah. The last time Pedroia had immediate availability, he didn't say he was done, but it sounded like he kind of was 
Could, yeah, in, uh, in considering that when he was down here rehabbing a couple of weeks, uh, about a month and a half ago, he was very confident that he was going to be up there to begin with, like, getting ready. He was good to go. Like, he was good to go. Um, considering that he wasn't, um... He was still, like, a month certain, or two ahead of schedule. Yeah, since he seemed like he wasn't certain that he was going to be, you know, back at one point this year, tells me, yeah, he might be up the year. Yeah, to me, I don't... Or you're a month or two ahead of schedule. What was, the, what was the reward in being a month or two ahead of schedule? Why wouldn't they have slowed it down? Why wouldn't they? I know he got the okay from all the doctors. I know he felt bad. I know they checked all the boxes with Pedroia. But I kind of question, what's the point? Of, you know, at his advanced age and what he means to the team and the organization, what was the point of even being a month or two ahead? Why wouldn't you have said, all right, we're doing really well, but let's continue this rehab. Let's get you to 100%. Let's take our time with this There's absolutely no So I don't know why they tried to get him back for the All-Star break. That made no sense to me. The original plan was to bring him back after the All-Star game. And now we're talking about the year. After just playing. You know? I, mean, I don't know what was the reward for him. So I know we checked all the boxes. I'm not saying they handled it in breakfast. I would have handled it differently. And I think they should have. Because at his age, what was the point of being a month or two ahead? There wasn't. No, there wasn't. Yeah. And you didn't eat. Right, I mean, busy. you you were playing fantastic. You've been playing fantastic all year. I mean, Granted, when they brought him on the Red Sox, right? And now, with and now you're going to have to have to rush Brandon Phillips into the system. <laughs> you do. You, you really have to sign Brandon Phillips, first of all. Instead, you could have had Pedroia you know, chugging along there. No, no, we're going to get Pedroia back. We all said that. And I was like, well, we're not getting Pedroia back. We have no idea. And now we have to get Brandon Phillips back. I mean, this guy was years ago. Oh, like, you know, he hasn't been an all for years. He hasn't been a quality player for a long time. I mean, like, like the, the Red Sox starting lineup today, you had a catcher at first base, you had um, a bunch of mediocre infielders around the, uh, around the, uh, just, uh, around the infield. You had, I think, was it like Ron Holt, uh, I, I think, third. Well, average player. You had Jamie Martinez in the left. I mean, granted, great player, but he, he shouldn't be playing the field. Well, I'm sure he was very happy about being in left field. He loves playing the field. Um, face it, like, you, they needed the guys up there. Yeah, they did. They did. Uh, like, especially with, uh, Ben and Timmy, I'm reading this, I'm assuming until next Friday. So they, 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 I, th- I felt like they rushed Pedroia. I, I know they checked all the boxes. I just feel like it was an unnecessary risk to bring him back at that point. It was. Um, so that's that. Um, so we'll be here in Pawtucket. Uh, we'll be bringing the latest. We'll see what Brandon Phillips does. His uh, Hoss Sox debut as a designated hitter. Um, I expect him to continue to be pushed through the system. Uh, that's that. Uh, Thanks for watching. Make sure to check out TrifectaNetwork.com. Like, share, subscribe, comment, ask questions, and uh, you can ask questions of the players if you want.